Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I would like to discuss something that Mazda did that is very anti-consumer and anti-ownership. There are a number of points that I'd like to try to make with this video, so I'm going to ask that you have the patience to be open to listening to the numerous different points that I'm going to be making, because this video is going to go in several different directions at the same time. There are a number of things that I want to address with this thing that Mazda did recently, which is where they took down an integration that allowed somebody who is using a product called Home Assistant to use Home Assistant with their Mazda vehicle. For those who are not aware of Home Assistant, Home Assistant is a project that is open source with a very permissive license that is what, in my opinion, technology and cloud was supposed to be. Many of the people who watch this channel would never dare have a cloud-connected device in their home because they realize that the practical reality of how cloud devices are implemented nowadays is fundamentally anti-freedom. Cloud is not a feature. It's often an anti-feature. It's a way for a company to change the device's functionality after the sale. It's a way for them to take features that used to be free and turn them into subscriptions. Above all, it's a way for a company to be able to remotely turn off something that you purchased and paid for. And that's not what cloud is ever supposed to be, nor was it what technology is supposed to be. Home Assistant is an amazing open source project with a very permissive license that is everything that cloud and automation was supposed to be. You being able to turn on or turn off lights in your home, you being able to turn on or turn off the air conditioning in your home, see what's going on with your car without anybody else having control over. Home Assistant is the type of software that the average viewer of my channel that would say F all this cloud nonsense would be, and dare I say should be, proud to have in their home. I'm not paid by Home Assistant, I just think it's good stuff. You can self-host or self-manage your own instance on a server of your choice and you get to run the client. You get to run the server, not somebody else, and you get to choose who connects to it. This is a great piece of software whether you want to change the temperature in your house prior to coming home or you want to see what's going on with your car. And there's a gentleman that wrote a great library for being able to connect to a Mazda vehicle. This is a piece of software that many people found useful for many reasons, and I'd like to read you what some of those reasons are. One individual said that he used it frequently to ensure there was enough gas in his car for an early commute that was with a shared car, and for alerts to see if the windows are up before rain is supposed to arrive, to allow remote unlocking so to avoid a long hike back to the car when I left the keys inside, and remote starting as the weather starts to get colder. Again, early morning commutes. He says that Mazda's application is a very poor implementation of these features and functionality, whereas the integration that somebody wrote for Home Assistant is excellent. It works. It's high quality. It respects your freedom. It respects your privacy, like this stuff should have been from the beginning. And above all, they're not charging money for it. It uses the API that the vehicle makes available to you to be able to do these things. Now, what Mazda did is they decided to file a DMCA takedown notice. And I'd like to read you the sections that I found to be the most disgusting. Please Please do keep in mind that I am not a copyright attorney, I am not a software engineer, I can't even get WordRap to work in C on Exercise 122 and I've been trying to for three weeks. No, really. So I'm not an expert in this area at all. And if you are, please do correct me where I'm wrong below. I don't want to pretend I'm one when I'm not. I'm simply somebody that reads this and thinks that this is bullshit. So they say, please describe the nature of your copyright ownership or authorization to act on the owner's behalf because they are talking about code that is on GitHub and they are saying that they are authorized to act on the copyright owner's behalf. The original copyright owner is Mazda Motor Corporation, parent company of Mazda North American Operations. The original copyrighted code that is infringed upon is on the app. Store and the Google Play Store. The code enables Mazda customers to use these applications to perform the following functionality on their vehicles. Locate dealers, download owner's manuals, stay up to date with recalls, remote start, monitor vehicle health, receive vehicle status alerts, easily find your car remotely, and so on and so forth. And they're saying that Mazda has invested tremendous time and resources to develop confidential and proprietary information, including computer code used by this company, and proprietary API information, and blah 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 And they're asking for a takedown of the code that was added to Home Assistant that would allow you to be able to access the information on your Mazda that you paid for that is connecting to the internet whether you like it or not to be able to read statistics from the vehicle. Now, there's a couple of things here that strike me as crazy. Again, even as somebody that's failed for three weeks to get word wrapped to work and see on Dennis Ritchie's Exercise 122. The first is that they are assuming that code is being infringed upon. They have closed source copyrighted code that is from the App Store. And that if you're accessing an API, the only way that they could do it is if they stole your code. That's not true. It's 
an API. They could simply poke and probe at the API and figure out how it works. I don't think these people understand how an API works at all. For instance, I have one for my ticketing system at work called Repair Shopper. There's an API. I have information for this API where if you input certain information, it will then output information like the status of a ticket. You don't have to steal code from an application to figure out how this works. You could just simply reverse engineer it. I didn't have to steal a manual from Apple to figure out that when the SMC is off, PP Bush G3 Hot is 8.5 volts. When the SMC is on, PP Bush G3 Hot is 8.55 volts. That's something that I can learn by using my own brain, by probing a board that works and probing a board that doesn't work and noting the differences between the two and pattern recognition. The concept that in order to use an API that you must have stolen copyrighted code is the most brain dead thing I've ever heard in my life. And the reason that Mazda is making this argument is because they believe that GitHub is not going to fight it. But more importantly, they realize that if they show up with a lawyer and the other person is making free software that they're not charging money for, that they're just doing as a hobby project, that they'll simply give up. The claim does not have to stand up in court. Mazda does not need to make a technically correct legal claim here. They simply need to be annoying enough that an open source project developer who makes no money decides it's not worth it to me to fight this. And if this individual is literally making zero dollars for his time because this is a passion project, he is rationally going to say, I don't feel like fighting Mazda's lawyers because I have a job, I have a life, I have a family. This is not worth it to me. Mazda knows that, and that is why they are making a claim that is this garbage. Now, there was a case with Google and Oracle several years ago where a court decided that an API was fair use. Google using Oracle stuff was fair use. However, they didn't say whether or not you can or cannot copyright an API. That was still kind of uh, fu you know, fuzzy because people are bringing up that case. That case is not saying that you cannot copyright an API, which again, to me, is insane because I don't think that that should be copyrightable, but it's saying that that Google, what Google was doing was fair use. But you must keep in mind that when Google decided to fight Oracle, Google has money to fight Oracle and they have time and they have an incentive structure that a developer that is literally developing a plugin and a library in their spare time is not going to. These companies do not need to create the best claims. They simply need to create a claim that is a hassle or a nuisance for you to fight. Similar to when I was dealing with New York State government and I would deal with these nonsensical fines and things, It's they don't have to be correct. You just have to make it so that it takes a four hour phone call to get around it for, for most business owners to decide, screw it, I'm just going to give you the money and pay you what you're asking for because I don't want to deal with this shit. And that's what they're doing here. The next thing that I think is very important to go over is the fanboyism. On this channel, I hope that people don't listen to these videos and think this is the only company that's bad. That's why I love this other company. I want them to be fans or dare I say it, viewers or patrons of a philosophy rather than a brand. Many people will point to companies like Tesla or Apple that do many anti-consumer things. And when they do do anti-consumer or anti-freedom things, I will be the first to bash them on this channel. That being said, let's be real here. If internal combustion engine personal vehicles came out in 2023 rather than in the late 1800s and early 1900s, we'd probably be dealing with subscriptions for how many times you want to use your spark plug. Every time you want to, you know, start the vehicle, like, oh, you get 10 starts a month for $10 a month. You get 20 starts a month for $20 a month. You get unlimited starts a month for $100 a month. You know that the landscape would be different if cars came out today. The only reason that we have the freedoms that we do with these devices are because these are grandfathered in, because these devices came out 100 years ago, back during a time when we actually valued ownership and we valued freedom in this country. And it is not something that we value the same way now. It's easy to point at Apple. It's easy to point at Tesla. It's easy to point at these companies and laugh and say, this is an electric vehicle problem. This is an Apple problem, when in reality, it's a culture problem. And other companies, old industry companies, are starting to catch up on this anti-freedom, anti-ownership crap. This is not something that only affects you if you have an electric vehicle. These are internal combustion engine vehicles where you are using the software to be able to check how much gas is in your vehicle. And they're disabling your ability to do that unless you use their software. Your car connects to the internet, whether you like it or not, but you're not allowed to use the software of your choice to connect to your vehicle. And if somebody makes software that's widely 
utilize because it is superior to the manufacturer's software, well, they're just going to use a bullshit legal claim to shoot that down because God forbid you have the freedom to say how you access your car. I think it's very important that we stop looking at this as a Tesla problem, an Apple problem, an electric vehicle problem, and we start looking at it for what it is. It's a freedom problem. It's an ownership problem that every single company in the pursuit of making more money by taking away our mindset of freedom is taking part in nowadays so that we don't get tunnel visioned and we don't focus on this over here and allow all these other companies over here to screw us because that's what's happening. Lastly, to end the video, Speaking of companies that don't want you using alternative software that gives you more freedom. Kills me to say, but I am going to have to censor myself on this platform in a way that I did not have to before. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty in this video, nor will I get into the nitty gritty on this platform. There are certain principles that I have when it comes to freedom, and there are certain principles I have when it comes to identity, and more importantly, owning your identity and the importance of owning your identity that I hope have become much more obvious now that certain content that I've created is less available now than it was before. There are principles that I've had for a very long time, whether it is right to repair, your ability to have the freedom to do what you wish with what you own, uh, or uh, your freedom to be able to manage your own identity. And I, on this channel, it's incredibly important to me that I not just talk about a problem, but that I also try to be a part of the solution. When it comes to right to repair, when it comes to Apple saying that you should not be allowed to do these repairs, here's why. I don't want to just say that they're wrong. I want to demonstrate that they're wrong, and not just in a way where you can agree with my argument, but where you can be a part of the solution. I don't want, just want to say that they're wrong about repair. I want you to be able to take part in it yourself. I want you to pick up the tools. I want you to learn how to use them. And I want you to follow my example that I did with over a thousand videos and make people's devices work again. Make sure that every one of those customers that was told it's impossible to fix a board understands on an innate level, once you have saved their data and saved their device for one quarter of what Apple is charging, that they were full of shit the entire time. I've always tried to be a part of the solution, and I've always tried to teach people how to take part in their own solutions. I'm not a person that puts bumper stickers in their car. I'm not a person that wears t-shirts with slogans on them. I want to take action, and I want to encourage others to take action that works towards that solution. So when I talk about the problem of identity, of not owning your identity as a creator, and a company being able to say, your identity is gone one day, few after the New York Times held you as a great de-radicalizer simply because you said something that they don't like, how you should have a direct connection with your audience. These are things that I believe in. And I didn't just want to make a video complaining about 3D print general. I didn't just want to make a video complaining about what happened to Destiny or anybody else. I wanted to try and be part of a solution. What that means is that there is a chance in the near future that we may not see each other as much in this platform. I've spent 11 years in this platform standing up for what I believe in, uh, whether or not I thought that it was the best thing to do for my business or the best thing to do for my uh, personal brand. Again, one of something tells me if I were to go on LinkedIn and apply for a normal job someday, if my company went away and my YouTube channel went away, that that's just I don't, I don't know if I'm like getting hired as a manager at Micro Center or some shit. Like, it's just not going to happen. Uh, but I just wanted to say, in case something does happen and we're not able to see anything, uh, see each other here on this platform anymore, that having the last 11 years in this platform to be able to talk to you all, to talk to you about my ideas, to share my passion with all of you for what I do, and see you take part in that passion and build your businesses and fix stuff for people and be a part of giving people their freedom back, um, that's meant everything to me. And in fact, when I look back over the last 34 years of life, I'll be honest with you, it's one of the few things that's meant anything to me. Thank you very much for being a part of that. I appreciate all of you. That's about it. Sorry, I didn't script this video. I honestly don't script most of them, but usually I at least kind of try to talk it through before I do it so I have an idea of how it's going to go. I didn't, so off the cuff. Thank you all. I appreciate you all. Um, whether I am able to continue uploading here or not at some point, it's been a fun ride. And I genuinely appreciate all of you who have been along for the ride. These 11 years. Bye now.